Order. And the sitting is resumed. It's time for questions to the Minister of Culture, Arts and Leisure. And we will start with listed questions. And uh, just to notify members that question 10 has been withdrawn. And I call Mr Tom Elliott. Uh, question number one, Principal Deputy Speaker. Um, I thought we were doing the topical questions first. No? No, at the end? Sorry, sorry. Okay. I think everybody else thought that as well. Sorry. Uh, I want to wish everybody, take this opportunity, wishing everybody a happy new year. Uh, in relation, as the, the, with the Principal Deputy Speaker's permission, I'll take questions one and two together. The IFA integrated supply team tenders have been assessed and the most economically advantageous tender has been identified. As no challenges were received during the Alcatel period, the funding agreement was issued to the IFA and successful contractor O'Hara and McGovern were appointed in December 2013. The design development by the contractor is currently underway and it is anticipated that works will commence on site in the next few months. Provided that significant delays around any potential legal challenges are avoided, then the Windsor development can remain on programme with completion of construction works planned for September 2015. Well, Mr. Tom Elliott for a supplementary. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker, and I thank the <coughs> Minister for that clarification. She did indicate that uh, it was subject to any legal challenges being avoided. Just wondering if the Minister anticipates any legal challenges uh, coming up uh, at this point of time? Uh, I certainly don't anticipate any legal challenges. Um, I think the member will appreciate, as will others, that we have come uh, a far distance in terms of the work commencing on the three stadia. Um, and I think it's good news, both for uh, Windsor Park and for Casement Park, that not only were the funding agreements signed uh, on December, that full plan permission for casement was also given, so I don't anticipate any legal challenges at this stage. Call Michelle McElveen. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And can I ask the Minister if she's satisfied that with the, very, the quite recent change in personnel within the department and also the departure of Noel Malloy as stadium project um, director, that sufficient expertise remains within the department to ensure that the three projects are both delivered on time and within budget? I um, appreciate, again, I thank the member for a question. Um, I mean, Noel Malloy came into the department with a huge reputation after delivering, delivering Titanic and other significant projects. Um, and uh, I mean, that expertise will continue. We're certainly looking at whatever gaps there are. But I'm more than content at this stage that the three uh, programmes will be delivered on time. Uh, I'm not really aware of other changes within the department other than the permanent secretary, but certainly there has been seamless links, and that's what I hope to continue throughout these programmes. Well, Mr. William Humphrey. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I uh, thank the Minister for her answer so far. The Minister is really aware that uh, obviously Windsor Park is the home of Northern Ireland. It's also the home of Linfield Football Club. Can I ask if uh, officials from the Minister's department have met with Linfield? Does she have any plans to meet with Linfield uh, Management Committee? I'm not aware of any officials have met Linfield, but that's not to say that they, they wouldn't have. Um, I certainly would have anticipated um, that certainly starting this year, a number of requests from certainly Irish League football clubs will increase, uh, not only to meet myself, but the officials to find out what's happened, certainly in terms of sub-regional. I, I, I meet any club. I'm not aware if I've, I've received any invitation from Linfield for a meeting. Mr. Kieran McCarthy. Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker, and I wish the Minister for Culture a happy new year. Um, could the, the Minister uh, advise the House, is she satisfied uh, that Casement Park will progress despite the enormous opposition that there was from residents, and one can understand uh, why residents would be concerned? Is the Minister concerned that uh, those concerns have been looked after? Well, the, and I thank the member for his good wishes, and as we say in Irish, girl, Burley, did the same to yourself, Kieran. Um, the concerns that residents have raised uh, were considered, uh, fully considered as part of the uh, application for planning permission. Um, the plan permission was awarded on the 18th of December with those considerations made. Um, I anticipate uh, 
uh, that not just with Case and Park, but certainly with Windsor and Ravenhill, we'll be having certainly more meetings with other stakeholders, particularly around benefits. And I have no doubt that the residents with concerns will be part of those meetings should they request them. But I have to say that, and as a member, this will come as no surprise, I am also receiving increased uh, requests to meet uh, groups dealing with those who are long term unemployed, dealing with uh, children, young people leaving school, looking at apprenticeships, uh, businesses, local businesses, and other groups are, who are looking at some of the social benefits. So all that will be taken into consideration. Thank you. And I call Mr. Trevor Clark. Uh, question number three. I thank the member for his question, and I understand that the member has helpfully clarified um, what he means by the meaning of major uh, capital uh, investment in this context. It means uh, excess of £250,000. I can uh, report at this stage that no uh, capital investment of £250,000 was funded in the South Antrim constituency since 2012. I am able to draw the member's attention to smaller capital investments uh, in this constituency will just fall below this threshold. The member will be aware in 2011-12, uh, Sport NI um, invested £245,000 in the Burnside Ulster <coughs> Scots Society and £233,000 in Crum United Football Club. More generally, I am sure the member will acknowledge the decisions on the location of capital investment are not made on the basis of a constituency, but rather reflecting on a number of factors. I call Ms Michaela Boyle. Oh, sorry, Trevor, for your supplementary. My pardon. Thank you very much, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I thank the Minister for answer? And yes, I welcome the fact that both those clubs got a considerable amount of money investment um, for those projects. And I take from your answer that there is factors, but one of the factors, as you appreciate, is need. And I'm sure the Minister, and I think you've previously answered me, there is a large need for sports facilities, particularly football in the Southampton area. So I'm just wondering what her department could do to make that a more proactive approach to try and encourage clubs to come forward to make those applications uh, for her department to disperse that money. Um, I, I'm assuming that the member isn't just referring just purely to sports needs, but certainly sports and other needs within this constituency. I'm more than happy to meet the local council, for example. I've met other local government representatives, be it council officials, uh, councillors and MLAs in relation to any potential or future investment in our constituency. If there are members so wishes, I'm happy to, to do a meeting to that end and certainly give advice. And if it is about sport and other opportunities to bring officials up from uh, some of the arm's length bodies, I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to facilitate that meeting because, like many members, Certainly in the new year, the number of requests, and I, I don't think for one minute it has anything to do with an election in May. The members raised this before. But certainly I've received an increase uh, in the number of requests to meet local representatives about potential investment in our community. So I'm, I'm happy to do that. On Ms. McKilla Boyd. Gormaga, Tanaj Kamkolia, Kestia Everatri. Question three. Question four. Question Question four. It's, yeah, good stuff. pre last can call you have them on their toes. Uh, with your permission, I'll take questions four, seven and eight together. Uh, I recently announced my strategic vision for the city of culture legacy, not just the city of Derry, but indeed the North West. I have secured over £2 million for the January to March period 2014 to support a continuation of key projects from the city's culture <coughs> programme and to prevent the loss of key benefits and partnerships. This will also stimulate new collaborations between creative industries, businesses and provide strategic investment to sports facilities development in the North West. I will also, as I have stated, make a further bid to the Executive for funding mm -hmm. for 2014 and 15 financial years and beyond to support ongoing and new interventions which maximise City of Culture benefits across the North West. This will include support. This will also support the executive's priorities in growing the economy, tackling poverty, social exclusion and equality. I'm therefore uh, keen to ensure that the DECAL office that will be set up in Derry to further enhance focus in the North West 
and this will have responsibility for coordination and oversight of culture, arts and leisure activity in that area, which will include Dari Straban, Limavati, Coleraine. My officials are currently preparing detailed arrangements and costs, and it is my intention to have the new departmental office in place for the start of 2014-15 financial year. Call Michaela Boyle for supplementary. Um, can I thank the Minister for, for her answer to the question? And I suppose she's gone some way to answer my supplementary. But further to that, it would be important that Straban would benefit from the legacy of the City of Cultures, given that both councils will uh, amalgamate into a regional council. However, would the Minister envisage, can the Minister uh, inform me or the House what um, the, the, the benefits of that and, and in terms of generating new projects, what further assistance can, can her department give to those councils? And I'd like to take the opportunity, I'm sure the Minister would join with me in wishing Straban Athletic um, the very best they drew with Balna Manard and uh, going to a replay. I'm sure the Minister will agree with me. The success. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I, I'm happy, even though Tom Elliott's not, I'm happy to, <laughs> to wish Devon FC all the best and indeed Bonham Mallard. Uh, I also want to uh, assure the member that uh, when we're, we're talking about, and I did mention Strabane and I mentioned Lamavati and I mentioned Coleraine and other areas, that when we're looking at how we can expand the legacy of city culture across the North West, we're doing just that. We're actually having meetings with uh, key stakeholders in the community. We're also looking at the opportunity for roadshows and information and consultation events. And I have asked that Straban, in particular, be the first, one of the first uh, areas to go to, to you know, ascertain and find out and make uh, links with people who have their own opinions. There, it is important, and it has been said, that the legacy city of culture, and even people in Derry City would say this, has been tremendous. We need to make sure that it isn't just located within one geographical area. Uh, my experience of the city is people are very generous and happy to spread all that love across the North West. Thank you very much, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker, and can I thank the Minister uh, for her answer, and particularly in, in relation to the lead answer. And I think she's right. I think most people in Derry want to see the legacy spread beyond the, sort of the city boundaries. But in relation to the premises, she alluded that there will be a premises in the city. Could you give us an update on that and perhaps outline how the, the appointments will be made to the new delivery mechanism? Um, I thank the member uh, for his question. And he and others will be aware that not just what I said you know, almost minutes ago, but certainly when we were launching the legacy for the city culture, we stated that we'd have a a decal office in the North West. At the minute, we're currently looking at uh, scoping out where that office will be, uh, looking at a couple of options, looking at costs, costings around them. Uh, and we would, my ambition is, and I have no reason to say that this isn't happening, that that office will be certainly opened by the end of March, beginning of April. Uh, and indeed, uh, not just the physical office around that time, but I'd hope to have uh, the new cultural partners, the board and the staff certainly in place by April and June. So by certainly by the end of this session, I'm already talking about the summer Rooney back, I'd hope to have that well in place. Pat Ramsey. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Could I ask the Minister, given that she very clearly has acknowledged the importance of the legacy uh, to the North West and to the wider region of Northern Ireland, Given the experience and capacity of the staff within the City of Culture Company, will any of those staff be used to, to maximise the importance of the legacy? Well, the member is aware, and I'm sure he can appreciate, that it isn't a cheapy arrangement. It isn't just about transferring staff from one body into another. We're two separate bodies. They're employed by Derry City Council. Um, what I would say, and the members, I'm sure, already, the members of staff already know this, when the advertisements are advertised publicly, which they will be, anyone, regardless of what their current employment status is, are entitled to apply for that. And I would hope, and I would hope, and I'm sure the member would share this uh, aspiration that the best possible people are imposed to make sure that the legacy from 2013 is uh, does endure 2014 and beyond. Mr. Gregory Campbell. 
Thank you, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker. Um, the, uh, to see the Minister and the questioners uh, overlook the fact that it was a UK city of culture, uh, but you will be aware that inclusivity was the key word uh, throughout the uh, UK city of culture year. What steps are sh is she going to take to ensure that as it spreads out from Londonderry, Limavady, Strabane and Coleraine, that that key word is implemented in practice, that communities right across the board can see it as a system and a set of programmes that they can take part in, and there doesn't have to be arguments and fights and disputes at the early part of the UK city of culture in order to get there? Um, I thank the member for his question. Uh, to be fair, the member is the only person I know arguing and fighting <coughs> about this whole thing, and I'm sure he will support. I am sure he will support Derry's bid for Irish City of Culture in 2016, and I look forward to his support in that. The walled, the walled city tattoo and many other cultural examples that happened in 2013 were inclusive, and I know the people across the city, from wherever they come from, have a sense of themselves and a sense of what they were celebrating, not just in 2013, but what they hope to celebrate collectively beyond in, in an inclusive way. The only people that I find have issues around inclusivity really are probably, well, probably you have the privilege of having that sole title. <laughs> so what I would do is I would look forward to your support for the bid for our city culture for 2016 and demonstrate full inclusivity. I call Mr Stephen Moutry. Question number five, Principal Deputy Speaker. I thank the member for his question. The creative and cultural infrastructure and programmes already funded and supported by my department will play a key role in telling the stories and different interpretations of the First World War and other important events from this decade of centenaries. And as an example, libraries are developing a programme of exhibitions, talks and book launches to commemorate the start of the First World War. Uh, museums are also planning to outline access to collections and an exhibition and programming at the Ulster Museum and the Ulster Folk and Transport Museum. This will also involve cooperation with the National Museum of Ireland and the Imperial, Imperial War Museum and National Portrait Gallery in London. Stephen Moodry for his summit. Thank you. Uh, recently, the Government of Westminster allocated some £50 million for historic commemorations of the centenary of the Great War. Given that many young men went from all communities across Ulster to fight and to die in the cause of freedom, can the Minister tell us what discussions she has had with her UK counterpart, uh, Maria Miller, to see what more can be done in relation to Northern Ireland and the Great War commemorations? Um, well, first of all, I haven't had any discussions um, with Maria Miller uh, in relation to this. I've had discussions with Ed Vasey, uh, certainly in terms of other aspects of cultural heritage, and, uh, and I, intend, I intend to continue those. Um, I also contend to work with the member's colleague and my executive colleague, uh, Arlene Foster, in relation to taking forward uh, not just uh, the, the First World War, but also other um, aspects that will arise is very, very significant, particularly for people here during the decade of centenaries. Um, but the, the member will be aware, not only just what I outlined, but certainly Prony and the Somme Heritage Centre, which we're also supporting, are also planning to mark this most significant centenary and do it in a very respectful way. I call Mr Mickey Brady. Gorham, I got the appeal last and I thank the Minister for her answers and I think she's possibly answered part of my question. The executive statement in March uh, 2012 specified that the Daddy and Decal ministers will bring forward a programme for the decade. Could I ask the Minister if that has been agreed? Gorham, I got Yes, in short, that has been agreed, and as I have, and Minister Foster has said before, the principles underlying the executive's approach have been agreed and have been agreed on the basis of mutual respect. Uh, a multitude of organisations um, across the island, not just here in the north, are marking this and other uh, anniversaries, and my officials, along so, alongside with officials from Dedi, um, are looking at an online promotional platform to raise awareness of a broader range of activities about how we provide inclusivity and remember the past. And this work was to take on board uh, 
recent policy developments linked to and building a shared future in the United Community to be informed and have been informed by discussions before and certainly discussions in the future. And it is important that we do this. It's not what we commemorate, it's how we commemorate it and do it in a respectful way. Mr. Danny Kinahan. Thank you very much, Principal Deputy Speaker. May I thank the Minister for her answers so far and good to hear of those actions that she's putting in place for the decade of uh, centenaries. But bearing in mind the suffering and the sacrifice of soldiers from both parts of the island in the First World War. Um, she has hinted at this, but does she not think it is the best way of showing everyone our shared history and the way of the shared future, and that maybe talking to Westminster and working with them as well would be a great help? Um, I thank the member for his question, and I want to assure the member I have no uh, obstacle or no reason not to speak to anybody. I think that uh, certainly the, the more collaborative approaches that we can to make sure that we make it respectful events, regardless of how we feel about those periods of history, uh, even though none of us were born, but we seem to have an awful long memory. But it is really important that as governments and representatives of many people across the, this island and indeed other islands, that we try to work collectively. I have no issue with that at all. I have additional meetings coming up with Ed Vasey and other British ministers, and I'm happy, as I was intending to, to raise how we can work collectively and collaboratively around centenaries, around broadcasting, around languages, around sport, and many other interests that I think we could do probably better if given if we could certainly maximise opportunities that arise that we, may, that we may not know what each other are doing. But I want to assure the member I will talk to anyone, regardless who they are, about learning lessons from the past, and if there's anything I can do to provide better opportunities around inclusivity and respect. I'm happy to do that. Well done. Well done. Well, Mr. Loris Kelly. Thank you. Deputy Speaker, and speaking as someone whose great-grandfather died at the Battle of the Somme, uh, I think it's important that we recognise the contribution from many people right across the, uh, all of the community, and in particular the Catholic community. And I wonder, uh, would you join with me in, com in commending uh, the Minister uh, of, of the Gael Talk Affairs, uh, Jimmy Dana, and his good work in recognising the contribution? Of course, the history books will show that many people joined because they were believing in Home Rule and Redmond's army, uh, if, if you like. So I just wonder, have you any plans to meet or have you met with to coordinate an all-Ireland response to the commemorations, particularly around the fourth? of August, which was the date of entry to the war. I uh, thank the member for a question, and it will come as no surprise I have met with Jimmy Dean on this and plan to have further meetings in this. And certainly looking at, like for example, the member may not be aware, but certainly the public records offices of both are looking at ways in which we can use archives in order to add to centenaries or even learning and education. We're also looking at libraries, which we have done. We've had conferences on this, and we're We've had discussions, we'll continue to have discussions around how we celebrate and even you know, work together where possible in celebrating and remembering and commemorating events significant uh, throughout the course of the decade of centenaries. And I'm sure the member uh, has met Minister Dinehan um, and she will be also be aware of his enthusiasm to take this approach. David McNary. Uh, Deputy Speaker. Uh, I always appreciate the Minister's upfrontry, uh, not, not her affrontry. And following on uh, uh, from the Minister's answers so far, is it possible that I would be correct in, in, in surmising that we could be uh, financing the commemoration of rebels and terrorists? Well, I, I, given the context of the questions so far that have been based within the First World War, I think it's a bit churlish of the member to start. I mean, you're the only person today who's been affronted, even apart from Gregory Campbell, but that's just a given. Um, <laughs> but um, but in, in, in the spirit of the member's question, I will be upfront and being inclusive as much as I possibly can. If I, if, if I can add to, assist and complement better learning, better respect and certainly more inclusivity and using the decade of centenaries in order to do that, I will. And that is a genuine response. Um, and I'm sure and I know the member is keen to make sure that that will be the case, not just this year, but the years ahead throughout the decade. Well, Ms. Joanne Dobson. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Question number six. 
Uh, I thank the member for her question. Library's strategy for increasing library usage is set out in its 2013-14 business, business plan. And this plan addresses barriers to library usage through targeted outreach work partnership and working with local community organisations, charities and government departments. In keeping with my priorities, it, is also, and it also has a strong focus on increasing participation in those libraries which serve uh, those in the most deprived areas. However, our libraries are community hubs, and to ensure that they have a good environment, an investment programme is underway to refurbish or replace a number of library buildings and vehicles. In addition, 28 million E2 replacement IT system will provide faster broadband and Wi-Fi in every library for its users. The ongoing development of partnerships, investment in staff, stock and facilities, and increased community engagement is helping to realise this vision of providing a flexible and responsive library service that assists people to fulfil their full potential. Um, yeah, and I call Joanne Dobson for a supplementary. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Can the Minister give an assurance that where libraries have been inappropriately closed, she is actively seeking resources and support to provide library services to those communities? Well, um, I'm not too sure what the member means by inappropriately closed. We went through some, certainly some detailed explanations around and indeed an attempt to try and engage more people becoming members of the library, particularly in rural areas, to make sure that the libraries and the future proofing around the libraries was sustained. That wasn't the case. We can only put public money into a, a service where there's been a, an identified need. But I'm certainly conscious of the fact, and I think the member, even through previous correspondence uh, around a particular library, I'm conscious of the fact that what we need to do is make sure that libraries and other community fac facilities, particularly in rural areas, are maintained and sustained throughout the future. Call Megan Farron. Um, can I ask the Minister what exactly is being done to improve libraries and um, services for users in rural areas? Well, I suppose I thank the member for a question. I suppose it's following on from the part of, of an answer that I gave Joanne Dobson in relation to her question. But certainly, um, I, in September last year, the, I, I was unable to make it, but the Minister for Agriculture and Rural Development was part of an opening of a library in, in Mid Ulster, and certainly in a rural area that was one of the libraries that, looked, was, that was under threat of closure. And what it looked at is, and what other libraries have done, particularly. You know, even in the member's own constituency, which is the city, but certainly outlying areas and certainly in counties in Fermanagh and, and indeed across the north. It's looking at where libraries can join up with other service providers and provide a community hub. I mean, for example, libraries have 29 or 28 branches located in rural areas and they also provide mobile library services and even home call services for people. And as I mentioned previously, it's about better access to broadband and that, but I'm acutely aware that we can't have, and I certainly won't tolerate, access to services by postcode and decal. I need to make sure and will fight and sustain to sustain our services in rural areas, and that includes libraries. We're almost out of time, but uh, I'll call Karen McEvitt, and you may require a written answer. Thanks very much, uh, Mr. Principal, Deputy Speaker. And in the past, uh, uh, to answer the question time, uh, the Minister had encouraged. Um, the communities and, and uh, MLAs, etc., to respond to the mobile uh, library service strategy. Given that the consultation closed on the 14th of December, uh, can, the member, or can the minister give us an update on where we are and what the responses were like? Well, to be totally honest, I haven't had any discussions with either libraries branch and DECAL, or but it's certainly one of the actions uh, for the next fortnight that I need to get an update on what the responses were what the intentions are, and then talk to the library to see what we do with that. Uh, and I'm happy to write to the member, um, as indeed as she's a member of the Cal Committee, but certainly write to the member individually uh, on those responses and what, what the propositions are. The uh, order that brings a period for uh, oral questions in the end, and uh, I know the Minister is anxious to get on to topical questions, so I call Mr Chris Hazard. Can I ask the Minister to outline uh, what contingency plans uh, her branch had taken to preserve fish stocks during the recent adverse weather? Well, I thank the member for his question. And, uh, like many people, DECAL had an operation in place, as they did in previous years, to look certainly at fish stocks. 
uh, we ascertained at a very early stage that because the fish farms weren't in coastal areas that the threat was certainly diminished, but we did have an action plan and certainly we had uh, plans in place in the event that the weather took uh, a further turn and it had the likelihood of having an impact on our stocks. Hazard for a supplement. And thank the Minister for her reply. Indeed, it is uh, reassuring to know that uh, appropriate measures were taken. Can the Minister outline if anybody indeed from the Anglin community uh, came forward to offer assistance? Uh, there was any engagement perhaps with the Anglin community during the crisis? Thanks very much. Um, again, thank the member for his additional supplementary. I am not aware of any discussions that the Anglin community specifically had. The Anglin community are very active and have a very good working relationship with our fisheries branch. Uh, what I will do is we'll ascertain what, if any, uh, discussions or requests were made, and I'll write to the member. Ms. Megan Fair. Can I ask the Minister if she can confirm whether or not new capital funding for sports facilities will be made available um, for application for through Sport NI this month? Um, I thank the member for her question. My understanding is, and my indication have been as from yesterday, that Sport NI are certainly looking at new capital funding which I believed at one stage would be in place by the end of January. What they are doing is they are looking at a, a possible cocktail of funding or a, a funding package which will look at access at possibly three uh, different levels, smaller, medium and larger projects. That will be brought to the Board of Sport and I in March uh, for agreement uh, along with our, the department agreement and should be available for application by April. for a supplement. Thank you. Um, can I ask the Minister if she can provide assurances that this opportunity will be evenly spread throughout the North so that um, there is better provision in rural areas and equal access? Well, I, I can give the member an assurance that we are certainly continuing to have a look at need, certainly having a look at inclusion, uh, particularly around social inclusion. And uh, I mean, the, certainly I am aware in the member's constituency particularly in relation to arts, that there has been an ongoing criticism around a lot of money going to Belfast and more so Derry. I want to give the member and other members an assurance we are looking at projects, particularly a capital investment, based on need. And certainly that is a lengthy process, but I am happy to give the member that assurance. Call Mr John Dallet. Uh, Mr Principal, Deputy Speaker, uh, given the recent uh, media coverage on rising levels of uh, child uh, obesity levels. Can the Minister advise what action her department is taking in conjunction with the Department of Education uh, to address this matter? I thank the member for his question and I too have noticed maybe maybe it's just you know better promotion or whatever, but certainly there has been more uh, newspaper articles about concerns around childhood obesity and particularly type two diabetes. Uh, yesterday in conjunction with the Minister of Education we launched in St Louise's uh, College in West Belfast, Your School, Your Club, where we're looking at sports facilities, sports activities that are shared with club and or with schools and neighbouring clubs and youth clubs, GA clubs, soccer clubs, rugby clubs and youth clubs. And that's the, not only to make sure that the schools are and access to services are available uh, after school hours, but also to make sure that because in certain places there's a lack of land and a lack of support that we can do all we can to try and join that up because it is not only just about children and young people but even about our older generation who want to keep fit and active as well. Mind members about the, uh, the house rules in respect of mobile telephones, There's quite a bit of interference coming here. John. Uh, can I ask the Minister whether she is currently considering any business cases relating to this matter and if so can we expect formal approval to be granted in the near future? Well, I'm not aware of any specific projects. Uh, it's not to say that certainly schools or clubs or others have, have come in. I know of some who have uh, received Sport NI funding in the past, um, but certainly I'm happy to bring his request back to the department, find out where they are, if there are any, and give the member an update in writing. And I call Mr Tom Elliott. Thank you very much, uh, Principal Deputy Speaker. I would like to ask the Minister if she has made any decision to review the grants to local boxing clubs authorities uh, to include those who were not previously included in the funding packages. Um, well, I thank the member for his question. And 
The funding for boxing uh, position has remained the same. I'm not aware of any club not being included. If the, you know, the situation has always been if clubs are affiliated upon application, they're the, then they're in the pool like everyone else. The minor capital uh, support was made from August. From this month, and I believe some 83 clubs requested technical assistance for bigger support, and 76 clubs had uh, returned applications. I haven't made, or Sport and I, or no one else has made any decisions on those yet, but I'm not aware of any club thus far that has requested support hasn't received it. Mr. Tom Elliott for supplementary. Uh, thank you very much, Principal Deputy Speaker, and thank the Minister for that. Uh, can the Minister confirm then, uh, following the independent working group uh, that found that Sandy Row Boxing Club had been discriminated against, that that club will indeed get funding? Um, well, I think the report and the, indeed the Boxing Club actually <coughs> welcomed aspects of the report. I'm not aware of Sandy Row plan for funding and for funding being refused on that basis. I'm not aware of it at all. Um, I welcomed applications from everywhere, including from Sandy Row. Um, and I'm not really too sure that the full report actually concluded what the member is stating. And I believe, I believe that the club, uh, in conjunction with the independent panel and indeed uh, the Irish Amateur Box Association and the Ulster Council, are taking a candy attitude for the future. What I'm asking the member and other members uh, to do is to get behind the clubs and give them support. Thank you, and I call Ms. Rosalind McCorley. Um, Concordia, um, and I boil on Boyasa Hurchdon Ira Asa Fragri Gujisha, and I'd like to thank the Minister for her answers up to now. Um, I would like to say that I'm very happy to hear that uh, plan permission was granted for Kismet Park. So, can I ask the Minister if she can let us know when the social benefits will be announced? Um, well, the social benefits and social clauses should be announced uh, at the beginning of February, and that will mean the details. I have given you know, a flavour in the past of what some of the social clauses may look like. We are certainly looking to February uh, for the launch of social clauses, and then certainly actions uh, along with employment plan from the construction teams from March and beyond. Rosalind McCurley for a supplementary. Um, 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 can I ask the Minister, will uh, the community and voluntary sector be um, invited to, to briefings on the social clauses whenever they are available? Um, in short, yes, the community and voluntary sector will be involved. And, and in fact, I received uh, a request uh, from the community through the MP for West Belfast to meet a section of the community and voluntary sector and the partnership boards to look at uh, what the social clauses were, when they'd be launched, and what the relationship, certainly uh, through the construction phase of Case and Park, would look like in terms of the entire West Belfast constituency. But in short, yes, the community and voluntary sector will be involved. Ms. Karen McKevitt. Thank you, Mr. Principal Deputy Speaker. And I'm sure the Minister uh, will support me in taking this opportunity uh, to congratulate Dr. Sinead Marcy um, on winning the prestigious T.S. Eliot Prize for her poem, A Matter of Life and Death, this week. And in light of that wonderful achievement by poet uh, Sinead, um, I'm interested to know what initiatives uh, or funding does the Minister or Department provide to encourage the uptake of poetry by young people? Um, I thank the member for her question. I mean, the Arts Council in particular certainly have uh, dedicated member staff around poetry and literature. Um, I'm not aware of any specific measure around poetry for children and young people, uh, however I'll find out. But I'm sure the member, as she has raised, and other members will join with us in congratulating Sinead Morrissey on this uh, prestigious title. Uh, she's, I think, the first Belfast laureate poet uh, ever. Glad that she's a woman, but certainly it was good news when I heard it really very, very late last night that she'd won this award. Call Karen McEvitt for a supplementary. Thank you, Principal Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister if she has any plans um, to collaborate with her colleagues, the Minister of Education and the Minister of um, Employment and Learning, to ensure opportun opportunities are available uh, to the general public, young and old, uh, to take part or partake in poetry uh, readings or poetry classes? 
Um, well, I haven't had any plans, but she certainly put uh, an idea in my head. Um, and I'm happy, again, as I've offered other members, to have further discussions, because maybe the member has specific ideas about what this would look like. But I mean, the member of education has just walked in. He put me in a spot yesterday offering me to demonstrate trampoline skills to children and young people. So I'm going to do the same with him, literally. <laughs> but um, we're happy, absolutely happy, that any scheme, event, initiative that includes better use and better participation in literature, be it through poetry, sto storytelling, whatever, particularly for children and young people, we're happy to have a look at it and look at, it, look at it certainly positively. And I know Belfast City Council, through the Mayor, Marcina Muller, has certainly spearheaded a campaign of having city laureates, which I think is the best way of doing it. Thank you. And I call Ms Sandra Overland. Thank you very much, Mr Principal Deputy Speaker. I wonder, can the Minister um, outline if her department on what uh, funding her department has made available to the mountain bike trail at Davin Forest in my own constituency of Mid-Ulster? Um, I don't have the details at hand, I'm not aware. Certainly we've made significant investments certainly in County Down, but I'm not aware in terms of Middlestar of the member's own constituency. Again, as I said to other people, I'm happy to find out what the details are for, for the Montour. Uh, certainly in conjunction with my colleague, the Minister for Agriculture and Rural Development, and indeed uh, taken uh, presentations and meetings from stakeholders around this sport and others, particularly in rural areas, there is a growing trend here. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure uh, of the figures at all. And I'm happy to get those and write them over. Sandra over and for a supplementary. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate the Minister's response there. Um, I'm considering the, uh, the upcoming Giro d'Italia and the, the surrounding excitement and uh, activities that, uh, and the opportunities that we have here in Northern Ireland. Does the Minister feel that uh, there are opportunities in all constituencies right across Northern Ireland? And I wonder what her department uh, would like to, to do in support of that and enhancing cycling across Northern Ireland. Well, the member's right. The, the interest, certainly, in, in the Giro has been uh, expressed by all constituencies across. Uh, in fact, you'll be hard-pressed to throw a stone for any constituency that isn't involved in cycling. Uh, certainly, you know, her, her colleagues and my own colleagues from Armagh City have been certainly uh, been very proactive in terms of raising the uh, opportunities and skills that they have, and indeed the interest around the Giro and certainly around cycling and the legacy of the Giro. Um, I'm the sport and I have representation on some of the daddy subgroups around this. But again, I'm happy to try and get the details for the member and right here. And, and I uh, thank her for the interest, certainly, in cycling and learn, learning what lessons that we can nurture uh, and develop uh, and sustain around the legacy of the Giro, particularly around cycling. Very, very important, particularly in rural areas, that we have a good legacy uh, and a good investment in sport and physical activity. Mr. Cahill Boylan. Hey, Gorma, I'll get to pre last year and call you, and could I also welcome uh, the response of this to this question, but could I ask the Minister, can she confirm whether any funding requests have been made in relation to the Giro d'Italia from either her department or Sport NA? Gormila. Well, uh, I thank the member for supplementary. Um, uh, I know that ma many people have asked what the potential is. Uh, certainly, uh, I mean, as I said to uh, Ms. O Mrs. Overend, that, uh, and I think our ma City and Borough Council are one of the groups that are on some of the subgroups on Daddy and the Sport and now looking at the potential. Uh, I'm not aware of any funding requests being made thus far, but that's not to say they won't come. For a supplementary. Margaret, pre can call you. And could I thank the Minister for her answer? But will she ensure that any investment around this significant event uh, will not just be focused in around Belfast? And I certainly do welcome the Giro coming to our mass city and district, Carmel Margaret. Gorges are awful hard in Belfast, people, I have to say. Um, anyway, uh, yes, I will ensure that, like all funding opportunities, I have a statutory obligation under Section 75 to make sure that uh, funding and investment is met by need. If there's a need demonstrated in the member's constituency, he's in the pot along with everyone else. But certainly, we're looking at the uh, provision of uh, services and investment on, on the basis of demonstrated need. And I'm sure the member can assure me, and I'm sure other constituencies can assure me, that people have done an awful lot of work to ensure that they're up there in terms of any potential opportunity. And that uh, brings an end to the session on topical questions to the Minister of Art, Culture, Arts and Leisure. And uh, we will now move to questions to the Minister of Education.